Enrichment for an animal is a husbandry standard that attempts to enhance the quality of captive animals care by providing environmental stimulation for mental and physical well-being. There are many different types of enrichment, but the four main categories include foods and feeding. This is encouraging the animal to have to think and work for their food like they would do so in the wild. Sensory. This is stimulating all of the animal's senses, such as visual, smell, taste, hearing, and touch. Physical habitat. This is providing other objects and supplies to encourage the animal to perform natural behaviors like they would in the wild. And social. This is interaction with the same species or with the owner. As you may already know, hamsters are solitary animals, so they do not get the same type of enrichment from same species interaction like social animals do. Some hamsters may not even want to interact with humans, so for many hamsters, the social category may not be something we can do. So it's important we focus on the other enrichments. Many of these enrichments have to do with the enclosure and how we set them up. While we focus so much on providing our hamsters with large enclosures, we often forget to provide enrichment. Hamster cages are often left quite boring. Even I myself in the past thought I was doing well setting up enclosures, when in reality, they involved pretty much no enrichment or stimulation for the hamster. So the easiest way you can provide your hamster with enrichment, and probably something you can even start doing today, is providing them with forage and enrichment foods. Forage involves the hamster foraging. So in the wild, a hamster wouldn't just go to a dish, eat and take food from it, and then wait for it to be replenished because it's the wild. So they would actually have to put in some work and look for food. They would take food off of plants, or if trees have dropped things, they would gather that or look for insects. That is how a hamster would forage. So the first thing all you really have to do is just get rid of your hamster's food dish and start sprinkling their main diet all over the enclosure. You can put it in different spots and this allows the hamster to actually have to look for it. And you don't have to worry because hamsters have an extremely good sense of smell. Making other foods like fruits and vegetables more challenging to get to or have to reach for is also another good enrichment. Sprinkling hamster safe herbs leaves and flowers not only gives your hamster a healthy fiber filled snack, but also a range of new smells to stimulate their senses. Dried plants and seeds, which in the hamster community we tend to call these sprays, is another way to get your hamster to forage. Because this allows the hamster to actually have to pick the seeds directly off of the plant. And there are plenty of different types of sprays to choose from. There are a variety of millets, flax sprays, wheat sprays, oat sprays, um, quinoa sprays, sorghum sprays. There are so many that I could list off. Unfortunately, these are less common to find in North America, so you are probably going to have to order overseas, but I will make sure to leave some links in the description bar to where I personally find my own sprays for my hamsters. Herbs and leaves can be replenished or added to the enclosure about once a week. They're not necessarily too unhealthy, so I wouldn't say there's really a limit on how much leaves and herbs you can give your hamster. As for the amount of sprays you provide, this may depend on a couple of factors, such as the type of spray and whether your hamster has interest in it or not. For example, flax sprays are a big hit with hamsters, but something I recently found out is that one flax spray pod contains on average about seven flax seeds. Therefore, if your hamster really enjoys flaxseed sprays and they eat them all at once and you're leaving big bunches of flax sprays in the enclosure, it may be a bit too excessive. So you should be mindful of how much you're giving and how often you're giving it. Deep bedding. This is one of the most important enrichments to provide a hamster. For years, it was super common to just give your hamster just enough bedding for them to walk on. You could probably even look up some care guides that say just put enough for it to cover the flooring, when this really is not enough. Hamsters in the wild are naturally ground dwellers. They typically would create burrow systems up to 31 inches deep, consisting of multiple different chambers. 
There was even a study done that looked into the influence of bedding depth on golden hamsters. So in this study, they took 45 male golden hamsters and they put them into three groups, one with 31 inches of bedding, one with 16 inches of bedding, and one with four inches of bedding. They discovered the hamsters that were kept on four inches of bedding showed significantly more bar chewing and wheel activity than the other hamsters. In the group with 31 inches of bedding, zero bar chewing was observed. And all of the hamsters in the groups with 16 inches of bedding and 31 inches of bedding all made burrows and used them. This brought them to the conclusion that cages with at least 16 inches of bedding enhanced the welfare of the golden hamster. Now, often there are a lot of people who say their hamster just doesn't like burrowing, but if you're not providing your hamster with enough bedding to burrow, they're not going to want to burrow. What is the point in trying to burrow in this much bedding when you're not going to be able to actually properly burrow? Keep in mind, burrowing and digging are not the same thing. In order to make a burrow, you need to be able to have a deep substrate because you are making tunnels down into the ground. And this cannot be done if you are providing less than six inches of bedding for your hamster. Most hamsters won't even start trying to burrow until they've been given at least 10 inches of bedding. Now there are people who suggest that they've given their hamster really deep bedding over 10 inches and their hamster still doesn't want to burrow. Why? Well, there could be several reasons for this. One, your bedding doesn't hold proper tunnels. There are quite a few beddings that may not hold a tunnel, and so when trying to do so, it may just collapse right away. Hemp shavings, aspen flakes, or carefresh often isn't the best for holding tunnels. These beddings can sometimes be improved and fixed by adding a layer of soft hay in between. So it's kind of like making a lasagna and it will look really cool, but it will sometimes help the tunnel stability. Don't forget to compact your bedding down when you're adding it in. Don't just add the bedding in, fluff it all up and assume that is 10 inches because as soon as your hamster is going to be walking back and forth on it, it is going to slowly compact down and you're gonna be left with a very small amount of bedding. And if you're not providing compacted bedding, then it's also not gonna be great at holding tunnels. Number two, you're not providing them with a big enough section or you're just providing the hamster with a mountain of bedding. I highly suggest making the entire enclosure the same depth of bedding or at least a very, very large portion of it. This way it allows the hamster to be able to create burrows all throughout the cage instead of just one dedicated section. Number three, you haven't tried adding a burrow starter. Many hamsters in the wild, such as dwarf hamsters, actually tend to take over pre-existing burrows that another animal made. So this can be done by adding a cork log or any other sort of tunnel halfway into the bedding. So it kind of gives them a little starting point. You could also get those hay cardboard tunnels that connect together and kind of pre-make a little burrow system for them so then they can continue on if they'd like. If you've still done all of these things and your hamster still doesn't want to burrow, just give them some time. Some hamsters can take up to months to decide that they want to start a burrow system and they need to be able to have that opportunity to do so if they want to. So if you're taking away the bedding and only giving them two inches because you think they don't like burrowing, they're never going to have that opportunity to actually create a proper burrow system. The next enrichment you can provide your hamster is different substrates. These are substrates that allow your hamster another texture to touch as well as dig in rather than burrow in because these substrates do not make good for burrowing. So safe substrates to include in a dig box would include corn cob bedding. I do need to make a little bit of a note because this is made from corn. It may entice your hamster to want to nibble it. Now there are some hamsters who have no issues with it my hamster Lenny tends to um, want to eat it, so I did remove it from the enclosure, but some hamsters are completely fine with it. Coconut fiber, cork granules, beach chips, and pillow moss or sphagnum moss. Sand baths. This goes along with other substrates, but a sand bath is a must for the average healthy hamster. While hamsters groom themselves quite well, a sand bath helps remove any excess oils from the coat, and it also gives them a enrichment for digging as well as it can help keep claws wore down. 
Some hamsters, such as dwarfs and roboroskis, tend to roll in the sand more so, whereas Syrian hamsters may prefer to just dig in it or use it as a litter box, but I find that is very helpful for when trying to actually spot clean an enclosure because then it's just all right there. When providing a sand bath, you'd have to make sure you're providing a safe sand for your hamster. Dusts and powders need to be avoided because these can cause upper respiratory infections and that is not something you want to deal with. A safe, soft sand must be used. Depending on where you live, chinchilla sand may be a good option for you, but unfortunately in places like Canada and America, our chinchilla sand really is not good. It actually is quite dusty and could cause a respiratory infection. So some safe alternatives include a soft children's play sand, just as long as you've sanitized it and sifted before use, or a soft reptile sand that has no added dyes or calcium. It would also be best to avoid any sand from the dollar store or a craft store because we don't know what was used. Make sure the container isn't too small. It should be a decent size for your hamster to be able to walk in and dig or do whatever. It shouldn't be too small for them. I tend to prefer acrylic trays or a glass baking dish. These are very popular and good options for a cheap sand bath. Also including either some type of lip or a hideout inside of the sand bath is really good because this gives the hamster privacy and they're going to feel more comfortable to be able to actually dig or roll when there's something there protecting them. Tubes and branches. Tubes and branches allow natural coverage, clutter, and another natural texture for the hamster to touch. Hamsters are prey animals, so a space or enclosure that is too empty can often make them feel vulnerable. Giving them things to hide in or take cover under can make them feel protected. I personally love using cork logs and grapevine wood because one, they're natural materials, so you're really never going to get another one that is going to look alike. They're all going to come in different shapes and sizes. They're a natural material so your hamster can safely chew on them and they can wear down their teeth. They're also very textured so it can also help keep hamster nails trim. These are typically found in the reptile section of your pet store or you can find them on specific reptile websites. Other natural materials that can be used include bamboo roots, birch tubes, or some terracotta tubes. Platforms, this is another good way to provide enrichment for your hamster because you're able to put this in. They still have room to burrow underneath and you can put things on top. Sometimes you can even put a few things underneath and it also just gives a place to put any heavy items that you're worried about crushing your hamster if they decide to burrow underneath it. But keep in mind, a platform should not be taller than three inches for a dwarf or six inches for a Syrian because hamsters do have really bad depth perception and vision. They very easily can walk off a platform and if it's too high, they can hurt themselves very easily. This platform here was made myself, so you don't have to spend a lot of money to make one. You just need some wood and a couple of dowels and some safe hamster glue and you put it together and then you have a little platform. And lastly, we have hideouts and this is a similar category to tubes and branches because hideouts do provide protection and clutter to the enclosure as well as a lot of hamsters often will start their burrows there. It's really good to include multiple hideouts and not just one. Of course, your hamster may just choose one to sleep in, but you should still have multiples for them to choose from as well as then when they're in their enclosure, they can quickly go to another hideout. Maybe they just wanna sit in it, groom in there to feel safe because hamsters don't like to be in the open space too much. This is why we tend to semi crowd the enclosure because it makes them feel more safe and less vulnerable. There's many different types of materials that a hideout could come in such as wood, terracotta clay, ceramic, as well as cardboard. You could make your own cardboard hideouts. The only things we have to take into consideration when choosing hideouts is how they're made. If you're choosing a wooden hideout, you are gonna wanna avoid anything that seems to be made with nails in case the hamster does chew through it. You don't want them to get stabbed. As well as if it is a softwood hide, it could potentially leak resin. So these types of hides aren't recommended. As well as you need to ensure that the entranceway is big enough for the species that you own. 
For Syrians and Chinese hamsters, the diameter should be three inches, and for dwarf hamsters, the diameter should be two inches. This is important to keep in mind because if an entrance is too small, a hamster can potentially injure themselves, especially if their cheek pouches are full of seeds. As you may know, seeds can tend to be a little bit sharp, so if they try to press themselves into something while their cheeks are full, they can potentially cut themselves inside their cheek and then cause an infection, and that's not good. One specific hideout that I do recommend, but I do realize that not everybody has access to, is a multi-chamber hideout. Essentially, these are just wooden hideouts that have three or more different chambers for the hamster to use for different things, and it kind of mimics the way they would in the wild because that gives them an opportunity to choose, okay, I'm going to put my food here, I'm going to use this one as a bathroom, and this one is going to be where I create my burrow into my nest. If you are unable to buy a multi-chamber hideout, Aaron's Animals actually has a really good tutorial, so you can actually make your own. So that is it for this video, and I really, really hope it helped you guys to figure out how to give your hamsters more enrichment or how to set their enclosure up so they get the most out of it and the most enrichment, because enrichment is so important. A lot of people just think you gotta give your hamster the necessities and that's it. That is not going to be a happy hamster. That is a hamster who is just eating, sleeping, running on its wheel. That's not a happy hamster. So I really hope this video has been able to help you guys and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.